Okay, today we're going to talk about time management. And the objectives of this presentation um, is to demonstrate how you choose to spend your most valuable time, your most valuable resource time. Um, assess your current life balance and make changes where needed. So we're going to go over some tools and techniques and then um, you'll, we'll do some activities. Can everyone get one of these worksheets outside? The action plan and this? Okay. And for those of you who are watching online, we'll, we'll, the worksheets will be in the presentation. Um, then we're also going to look at ways to improve your time expenditure and how you manage your time. Okay, time management. What is time? This is a question for you guys. Not everybody at once. Like our, our own personal currency is just what we choose to, you know, invest in certain things and how we spend it and stuff. I really like that personal currency. It's a good way to, to um, describe time. Yes, how you invest in certain things and what how you're using that investment. Anyone else? Okay. So we're going to go with the personal currency um, definition. Um, well, keeping that in mind, how do you measure time? Come on, guys. Give me some answers. How do you measure time? Hours, days, weeks. Okay. Anything else? Um, just even as I've been here. Exactly. Um, also, like another definition of how to measure is from the like starting something and then completing something. Do you think that's a fair definition? Is that how you would measure some time here? Okay. And who's in charge of time? Are you in charge of it or is it in charge of you? What? I you are. You are? Do you feel like you are? Yeah. Okay. Do so you want to feel like it's in charge of them? It can be. It can be? Okay. Well, hopefully by the end of this workshop, you will feel a little bit better about it and you'll know some tips and tools to be more in charge of your time. Okay. So, I want to do a little activity. I would like for everyone to close their eyes. And when I say start, I want you to raise your hand when 60 seconds have, you think 60 seconds has ended. Don't listen to this clock ticking. Don't count in your head. Just when you think 60 seconds has ended, I want you to raise your hand. So you can go ahead and start now. Once you raise your hand, you can open your eyes. Okay, so no one um, brings their hand to the 60 second mark. Everyone was before. You guys were like probably like 15, 20 seconds before. You were like 10 seconds and you were like 5 seconds. So the point of that activity is to kind of show you that everyone values time differently. So when you are thinking about time management and you're trying to think about how to manage your time more efficiently and more effectively, you need to set a value for time to begin. Um, and then you need to communicate that value. So whatever, this, whatever value you're setting on time, whether that's being early, um, 
so you value on your study time, whatever you decide is most valuable, you need to communicate that value and then learn to say no. So those of you who are really involved or um, are taking a really hard semester, you need to let people know that you are involved and you have priorities. If that means, I've had students who have emailed their schedule out to family and friends to let them know, hey, I'm studying during these times, so don't bother me, basically. Um, and then learning to say no. People are going to ask you to do things, and when you set that value in the priority list, you got to be comfortable with letting people know, I can't. I can't do this right now. I have to do these things. Um, so you're setting the tone when you do that. That's you setting the tone with how you value time. Um, and you also, this is a good thing to keep in mind when you're doing things like group projects or working with other people, they may value time differently. And if you don't have that conversation with them about how they value time, you might be frustrated or there might be some inconsistencies when you set a time for a meeting. They may think it's perfectly acceptable to show up 15 minutes late. So make sure you're letting people know how you value your time and you're setting the value and the tone. Okay, so this is just a real general graph of how um, the average college student spends their time. Um, the biggest block is attending class, obviously, and then there's like three ties in the 15% with studying, homework, socializing with friends, and exercising and sports. Does this seem like normal for you guys? Is this how you would break down your time? I, I hope attending class is <laughs> your biggest priority. I met some students in some of my classes, uh -huh. and they're working awesome. Yeah, so that would be a different, a different I don't, I don't graph. Know how to do it. Yeah. And, and, and taking four, you know, some courses at the same time. It's hard because when I went to college, that that's what the the goal of Yeah. Me. Working, if you are working full time, then yeah, your graph would be completely different. That would probably be taking up the biggest chunk of your time. Um, I think it's interesting that socializing and friends is the same equal to studying and homework. I hope that's a little less for students, but um, obviously, according to this, it isn't. Okay, how do you manage your time? How many of you use a planner? How many of you use your phone? Okay. So, you use your phone? No, I, I use like a diary. Okay. In the morning, I, the night before, I, but I, uh, I set my goals for the, for the next day. I have that luxury. Okay. Um, those of you who are using phone and planner, how's that working? Okay. Okay. Alright, who uses the memory bank? Okay, good. No one does. Perfect. I don't have to give my lecture on that. Okay, we can move on. Okay, so old school versus new school. This is planners versus your smartphone um, or your phone. So think of your planners as the what. That's the to do, the assignments, everything that you have to accomplish with your coursework should go on your planner. Um, that means as soon as you get your handle on syllabus, all of those assignments should go straight into the planner. You shouldn't wait and do it week by week by week. You should do it everything at once at the beginning of the semester because that way you're not flipping through syllabus to try to figure out, okay, so this week I have a test in pre-cal, and then, oh, let me look at my syllabus, my other syllabus for biology, and see what's going on that week. You have everything in a planner, ready to go, at your fingertips. Um, smartphones, that should be the win. You're using that for um, appointments, your class schedule, work schedule. Um, I know you're an athlete, right, so practices, all that kind of stuff should go on your phone because usually phones will set on high for my students. Those two things should be working as a team for you. It shouldn't be one or the other. You should treat your planner as um, like your phone. It should always be with you. Does that make sense? Okay. So think of those things um, 
like I said, planner the what, smartphone the when. And before I get on to tips to using a planner, um, how many of you know your email, your Nova email, there's an Outlook calendar that you can put everything in and it will go straight to your phone if you've linked them. Yeah. So if you put everything on your Outlook calendar that comes with your email, it will link, if your email is linked to your phone, it will link to your calendar. So you, it, that will automatically set up appointments for you as well. No, if you have a calendar on your phone and your email is linked, it should do it automatically. So if you need help with that, you can definitely call the help desk. So I'll help you. Okay. So tips for using a planner. Um, find the right planner for you and name it. I know it sounds weird, but if you like personify your planner, you're more likely to remember it. So if you name it, you can be like, oh, I have to bring whatever, Billy with me to class today. Um, you're more likely to remember it and use it. Um, and when we say find the right planner, some people like the little ones, that's the new real concise and just real brief on what's in there. Some people like myself like the big ones that I can be very detailed because I like to make to-do lists and I like to have everything at my fingertips. Um, so you need to figure out which planner will work best for you. Uh, like I said the previous slide, treat it like your phone should be with you all times. Due date should be recorded ASAP. As soon as you get your hands on syllabus, you should go straight into the planner. Uh, use background planning. So if you have a week where you have like three tests and a paper review, use backwards planning in the sense of, okay, you see that week, that's like three weeks away because you can see everything in your planner now that everything's in there. You break your assignments up and use backwards planning. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, um, if, you, if you're planning, if you're using backwards planning and you see all that stuff three weeks away, you can say, okay, today I'm going to do this for this assignment and then I'm going to break that into chunks. Like if you have a paper, you work on it this, this week, next week, and then the following week. And then if you have a test, you're studying intermittently. So it's like preparing when you have midterms and finals. Hopefully you're not waiting the night before to prepare. You've broken it up. Does that make sense now? Okay. So always use backward planning. Use color coding or pattern planning. That way things kind of stick out to you and you know like this color is for this class. Like I have students who have folders that coordinate with the colors in this planner. So their green folder is for biology and biology is green in their, in their planner and then also in their appointments in their phone. Um, put everything in your planner. The more detail, the better. You won't forget things that way. Don't throw away old pages. I have students who have ripped them out um, just because they're done with it and they don't want to look at it. A really good tool for not throwing away old pages when you're preparing for finals and midterms, you'll know exactly when you cover the material. So if you date your notes, you, you'll be able to know exactly when you covered stuff when you're looking for it. Um, and you'll know when you're taking all the tests. And also, just in case um, there's ever a mishap that your professor didn't get a grade, you can say, I know that I did it because it was in my planner and I turned it in this day. It's just better to keep the pages. Um, here's the biggie. Put rewards in your planner for big days and events and due dates of things you've accomplished. Like, for instance, the example I gave is you have a crazy week. Make sure you've rewarded yourself at the end of that week for um, getting through everything. Does that make sense? Okay. <clears throat> Tips for using your smartphone. Make sure you set a reminder for appointments. Most smartphones do this for you automatically. However, you need to make sure it's going to give you enough time. Some of them do 15 minutes, some of them do the day before. Whatever works for you, you need to make sure that those reminders are being set for the appropriate amount of time so you actually remember to do it. Uh, find an app that helps you manage your time. Um, we've listed five ones that we know are pretty good. Uh, I still use Pro. Um, that's, it's really good for a lot of different things because it's got subsections. You can put assignments in there, planner, your instructors and holidays. It also has a GPA tracker for you. Um, 
Quizlet is a study habit and time management tool. You can make flashcards with this. Um, in class, it helps you record audio, take text or video notes, and from that you can create like slides and whatever you take your pictures of. I procrastinate. Um, you can organize your to-do list and your tasks, and you can set priority levels with this. Um, and Outliner, uh, it helps you organize notes, tasks, and projects, and you can use your Dropbox with this. Um, some of these are free, and some of them you have to pay for. Do any of you use apps that aren't listed on this for time management or organization? Okay. And you find it helpful? Good. Um, so, you know, if there's something that isn't listed here and you're using it, like the calendar, that's great too. Um, we just wanted to give you some a list of things. But we won't go to the next slide yet because I think it's in picture. Okay. So time management tips and tools. Um, scheduling. We're going to go over all of these. Uh, today, daily to-do list, creating a habit to balance your life and an action plan. So what we want to, what we really want you to walk away with today is understanding that time management only works when you start building a habit and a routine so it just becomes internal and you don't think about it anymore. Um, the, the kind of the analogy that I always use with time management, whatever the plan or routine that you're doing, try it out for like two weeks because it's like going to the gym. The first two weeks you're like, Ugh, I don't want to do this. And then after those two weeks, it just becomes second nature. You do it, you don't think about it. And that's what you want to do with time management, especially with a study schedule. Okay, so you all got this weekly schedule worksheet. And the way we use this in our coaching sessions is we have students write down their class time, um, work schedule, uh, any type of commitments if you're in club and org that you're meeting every week that goes in there, practices if you're an athlete, anything you're doing consistently every week, we have you put in this. Um, I'm not sure we're going to have time to do this, but you do have it, so if you want to use it, you can do it yourself, but if you're struggling with this, really come in for a coaching session with your coach. Um, the biggest thing that's interesting that I see as a coach with this worksheet is that most students don't equate class time with study time. Whenever you're picking your schedule out, you should always think that, okay, how many hours I'm in class, I'm going to have to study two to three hours for each time I'm in class. Does that make sense? So when you are scheduling, you need to think about those things. Most students just put class, and then they're like, oh, I'll study when I can fit it in. Study time is just as important as class time, because that's when you start getting the knowledge you need to succeed. So you'll see also in this worksheet that this student has been really consistent with their study time. You need to put times for studying and commit to them. That's how you build a habit and a routine. If you don't do those things, it's always going to be scattered and you're just going to be studying whenever and you're not going to formalize a routine. Does that make sense? Okay. So the first step is to create this worksheet. Another interesting thing was that students see two things. They either say, see, wow, I have a lot more free time than I thought I did, or wow, I'm way over committed. So this is a really good first step to kind of realize where you are in that continuum, and then you can start setting a routine. So an action plan. That is the other sheet that you got. So an action plan you can use um, if you're in a club and or you can use this, or if you're in a group project, or if you just have a lot of assignments you need to get done, you can kind of use this to facilitate that. Um, and it's pretty self-explanatory. You need to um, just kind of fill out all those the different parts. But the main thing is you need to be as specific as possible under each of these boxes, like objectives, resources needed. You need to be realistic in terms of measurement of task completion. And really know how long it's going to take you to do something. Um, don't put like a day when you know it's going to take you a week to do. And then your target date. Um, if you're using this with a group, then you would have check-ins. 
This is really helpful because then you can just scan it and send it to the group and whoever is responsible for what is done. It's on paper, it's like a contract. Um, any questions with this? Okay. Alright, so before we get to stone now, what, how do we make it work? The next um, step with the scheduler is once you've done that and all of your assignments are in your planner, like I've been teaching this whole time, um, you're going to start making weekly to-do lists. And that kind of gets us to how do you make it work. you got to be a little flexible with yourself with this because life happens and even if you are great at scheduling your weekly scheduler and you put everything in there, um, you got to understand that sometimes things happen and you got to be a little flexible or that may not work for you. For instance, if you're a morning person and all of your study time is in the evening, that's not going to work. You need to change things up and vice versa. If you're an evening person and you have these big chunks of study time at like 8 o'clock in the morning, that's probably not going to work either. You're, set, you're setting yourself up for failure. Um, so the, after you've done the weekly scheduler, you want to start getting in the habit of those to-do lists in your planner and finding what works best for you. So that may take a few times. It's practice. So these are 10 quick, easy ways to motivate yourself. Um, how come we don't do a Tools for Success on motivation? How come I, how come I can't teach you motivation? Exactly. So it's really up to you that once you've made this plan, or you come in for a coaching session with us, um, that you work on finding ways to motivate yourself. But these are really like kind of general good ways. When early, do something early every day. Like put one thing on your task list to knock out um, every day in the morning um, so you can get motivated to do the rest of your day. Change the game, like I just said, if whatever schedule you already have isn't working, change it up, try something new. Um, celebrate the small wins, this one's really important. Like, be really congrat, congrat that's not a word, congratulate yourself <laughs> when you've done even little things, um, because you'll see in life there are very few big things for most of us that we feel like we should be really proud of. So be proud of all the little things that you do. Um, believe in yourself. Confidence generates motivation. Um, prepare your day. This is really important. If you're doing this weekly scheduler, always give yourself some prep time before class, like 10 to 15 minutes, just to glance over your notes so you at least have read it, especially if it's like a morning class and that's the first thing you do in the morning. So your brain's already getting turned on to process the information. Um, do something you enjoy. Try to find something every day that you like to do, even for 15 to 30 minutes. Um, but if you have a schedule, try not to go overboard with enjoying it. Keep yourself on the timeline. Um, plan your dreams. Write down your goals. Last week we had a goal setting presentation. You should be setting goals all the time and really being specific with those. Do something physical. If you're having really long study time, don't do it for more than two hours at a time without getting up and doing something for 15 minutes because there's a lot of research that supports that those long training sessions, they don't work. You don't retain the information. So if you are studying, study for two hours, then go take a walk or a run or whatever. Um, it's, this always helps clear the, the brain and you can get more focused. Um, take care of loose ends. Don't carry the mental load around. This one's really important because a lot of students come to me completely overwhelmed and frustrated when they're doing time management because these loose ends are all over the place. So as much as you can, um, try to check off one or two things each day, even when it's really overwhelming for you. And connect with someone positive. If your social group or your support group are negative Nancy's, that's no good. Try to find some positive people that are going to help you move forward because positivity is contagious. 
The last one that isn't on the list that I'm going to add that I think is helpful, and I do myself, is um, I schedule check-ins on my phone twice a day. They're like five minutes. I put it in there. It says it's in here. I'm an And what I do is I just turn away from everything and kind of get my mind off of it. And I take like some deep breaths for three to five minutes just to kind of help me refocus. Because um, I sit at a desk all day or I'm out and about on campus and I need to just take that little mental break. So, and the only way that I do it is if I schedule it in my phone. Any questions? All right.